Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and you're watching my KISS photo series. My goal, my job, is to make photography just that much easier for you. So today my focus is going to be showing you guys how to convert color images into black and white, specifically using Adobe Lightroom, so stay tuned. So there's a variety of different ways you can choose to convert color images into black and white. Now, I'm specifically using Adobe Lightroom today, but the fundamentals and the concepts are still applicable to other editing platforms, so don't feel like this is just Lightroom specific. I'd also like to note, no two images are the same. Unless we have the same subject, the same location, the same camera, the same camera settings, the same lighting, our images aren't gonna have the same results. That's okay, don't get discouraged. The fundamental principles that I'm going to show you today is still gonna be applicable regardless of whatever photo you're working on. So let's just jump straight into Lightroom and see how we can easily convert your color images into black and white. So before we begin, I want to go ahead and mention that each photograph that I've taken is photographed two different ways. Our first image is going to be a studio lit image. Our next image is going to be a naturally lit image. And I also want to mention how each photograph was taken because it has an important effect on the image itself. So the first image is shot with a Westcott Zeppelin 47 inch. Shot at 1 25th of a second, F18, ISO 125 63 millimeters, 24-7 D Sigma lens. The next image is shot natural lit using a window using diffuse light, 1 25th of a second, F28, ISO 1250, at 51 millimeters using the Sigma 24-7 D lens as well. Now, depending on how the image is photographed is going to really be dependent on how the final output is. You're going to see how the differentiation between these two images is extremely drastic in regards to what our final toning is going to be like. I'm also going to note that the image, the section we'll be working on is the tone section of Lightroom and the present section. I'm only going to be, be manipulating the clarity section. I'm going to skip the tone curves specifically to make this uh, very, very in simple for the average beginner. Now let's go ahead and uh, go to our treatment section. I'm going to switch both these images to black and white and discuss what I'm seeing. So our first image I'm noticing is very, very flat. So is our second image. Now that's going to happen. The second you switch over to black and white, there's no contrast, there's no tones, nothing's happening with the image because you're converting something strictly to black and white. Flat means there's not very much a differentiation between the darkest parts of the image and the, the lightest parts of the image. There's not much contrast in the photo itself. So let's go ahead and discuss some of the sections we'll be working in. Our tone section and our clarity slider once again. So our exposure is going to manipulate the overall exposure of the image. If you want a lighter image, you go right. If you want a darker image, you go left. Okay. Our contrast is going to manipulate the lightest parts of the image and make them lighter. And our darkest parts of the image, it's going to make them darker. So let's go ahead and show you that. If I switch over to my right, it's going to go ahead and make the lightest parts lighter, darkest parts darker. If I switch to my left, we're going to have more of a flat, neutral photo because it's making the lightest parts and the darkest parts uh, kind of come together. Our highlights is going to manipulate our overall highlights for the image and either make them brighter or darker depending on which way you drag that slider. Our shadow is going to manipulate the shadow sections of the image. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to take the darker areas of our photograph and either bright, brighten those up or darken those, up, darken those down depending on, on what our lights, likes or wants are. Our whites are going to manipulate the colors closest to white in the image. So if I notice, it's going to start dragging the whites in his shirt and the whites in his face and manipulate those as well. So whites is going to manipulate the purest parts of the image, the closest to white, as opposed to highlights is dragging the, uh, the highlights of everything, all the lightest parts of the image and manipulating those. The black is going to go ahead and manipulate the darkest parts of the image, the closest to black, whereas the shadows is manipulating just darker colors. Okay, our clarity option is going to go ahead and manipulate contrast in the midtones in the image, which is going to go ahead and manipulate things to add a bit of texture and clarity. For instance, if I go ahead and drag that slider to the right, I notice I have more detail in his, uh, his blazer there. And if I drag that down, it's manipulating it and it's flattening out the midtones in his shirt. Okay, let's go ahead and reset that. Okay, let's discuss what I'm seeing in regards to this image. It's a very, very flat image. There's not much contrast between the lights and the darks. So first and foremost, black and white uh, conversions are all about personal taste. I like darker images with attention to clarity. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna wind up doing is going to my sliders and going down to negative 50. It's a good number to be at. I like it to be a little darker. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is increase my contrast. I want more contrast between the lightest parts of the image and the darkest. I want lighter 
lighter to be light, darker to be dark. So we're going to go ahead and increase the contrast quite a bit. I would say there is fine. Again, it's a very, very contrasty image. It's my taste. That may not be yours. I'm going to go ahead and go to my highlights. I want the highlight section to be a little brighter. So let's go up to 0.10 now. We'll go down a tiny bit. 0.6 is fine. Next shadow section, I'm losing some detail in those areas, so I want to bring some of those back and manipulate these. Let's bring this up. Okay, so I'm starting to get more shadow section in here. The next thing I'm noticing is that it's very distracting. His shirt's very, very distracting because it's super white. So all I need to do in order to manipulate that is going ahead and going to the white section, just dragging down to negative, uh, we'll say 23. Okay, so the brightest parts of the image, the white shirt here, which is almost pure white, isn't as reflective as it was before, it isn't as bright as it was before. I'm going to go to my black section. Again, I'm losing some detail in the black, so I'm going to increase the black section here. Just out of taste, so I have some more information uh, in his blazer here. I'm going to increase the clarity quite a bit, because again, I like attention to details, meaning these little details in the blazer and in the hair. So increasing the contrast uh, in the midtones in those section really gave me a bit more detail. So let's go ahead and see what that did. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm using a trackpad, so I apologize. Uh, go ahead and lower. I'm increasing contrast in the midtone, so it's, it's adding depth and it's adding clarity to those sections. So let's look at the difference between uh, back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and make a virtual copy. Reset that one, switch it back to black and white, and compare those two. So our image on the left is our final image. Image on the right is our before image. So let's look at what we've done. We added a bit more contrast. There's more details inside the blazer. It's a darker image. Uh, I have more details in his hair. The shirt isn't as bright as this right image. And my attention's more or less on his face and this section here. So I'm visually looking at this midsection here as opposed to this image. My eyes go everywhere from his eyes to the background to the blazer and everywhere. I'm directing attention to the center point here. That's how I would have converted that specific image into black and white. Let's look at the next image. We go ahead and go back to our develop module. First things foremost is this image is very, very flat. So I want to go ahead and increase contrast uh, before anything. So let's go ahead and look at how we're going to break this down step by step. First and foremost, it's a very, very dark image. I'm going to increase the exposure I would say by 0.2 and add some contrast. Again, I want some separation between that background and our subject, so 0.31 works for me. Next, those highlights here are very, very distracting. Again, when my eye visualizes everything that's here, it's kind of focused around her back. So dragging down those highlights is definitely important for this image. And I would say there, I would say right about there. So her skin doesn't look blotchy, but it, it does have definition in the skin. Again, now my eye leads to the lightest parts of the image. It's not automatically uh, focused in these areas here. It kind of has an even balance between her face and her back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just drag down our shadows a bit, only because, again, I like contrasting images. That's my taste, and that's, that's what I like. I don't have many whites in this image, so I'm not going to manipulate those, and I don't have many blacks, so I don't really care. But I do want to increase clarity because I want some more information inside her hair. And I do want some extra textures in her skin. So increasing clarity, if I look and I drag it all the way up, I'm adding, uh, again, contrast in the midtone. So I have some extra information in her hair. So I would say 0.29 is fine. So I have some extra contrast in her hair. So let's make a second copy of that. Create a virtual copy. And reset that image. Make sure it's nice and black and white. Let's look at those two side by side again. Okay. So our image on the left is where we began our image. It's a very, very flat image. There's not differentiation between the background and her. It's very muted tones. As opposed to one on the right, we have a bit more contrast. My eye is leading to the, towards the center section of the image, just on her face and along her back, as opposed to this image is very flat and it's not really uh, appealing in that aspect. So let's look at our final two images and see the differences in those. Okay. So overall, these are two different images photographed two different ways, and we're able to convert them both into black and white using those same methods. Again, black and white conversions are very much subjective into what you actually like. So by all means, know what the tools are used for and know how to manipulate them. Now, today we learned a bunch of new information. We learned the importance of the tools to convert color images into black and white. We learned the importance of that clarity slider to get some extra detail on your photos. We learned that no two images are gonna look the same, they're gonna have drastically different results. 
and we did that in a fairly short amount of time. So if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel or just share them with your friends. So you also notice that my environment's a little different than normal. It's because I'm currently in Dubai for Golf Photo Plus. So if you're here, say hi. And if not, find me on Instagram. You're gonna see a bunch of shenanigans behind the scene. So again, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.